Asus has been trying very hard to make a respectable name for itself in the Android phone world, and they have seen a fair amount of success in Asia and Europe, but in North America, Asus phones are definitely less common. The Zenfone 2 came out last year and I actually reviewed it, you can watch that here. While that phone had a premium look, some people complained that the build wasn't exactly premium with a bunch of plastic components involved. Well, the Zenfone 3 line is here with a truly premium build, sporting metal and glass construction all around, but without the premium price. Yep, both of them are still very much in the affordable flagship range at 500 bucks US for the Zenfone 3 Deluxe and 250 US for the regular Zenfone 3. That's 699 and 429 Canadian. Yes, up here it's still the true North strong and free and expensive. Now there's a third entry in the Zenfone 3 line, the Zenfone 3 Ultra. That's a 6.8 inch monster whose main feature is its giant screen. But today we'll be focusing on these two, uh, the phones for, you know, normal people. And before we go any further, a note. You will probably not be seeing any B-roll of the regular Zenfone 3 while it's powered on in this episode because the review model Asus sent us was an early production model and its camera was glitching out. I contacted our very nice Asus people who sent me an update file with which to flash the phone, which I did, but unfortunately doing that bricked the phone during the update process. Something was incompatible. Anyways, luckily I had already used it a bunch by that point enough to write this review, so just FYI, there you go. Now, looking at these phones, you can definitely see that Asus is going for a premium look and feel. Both the Zenfone 3 and the Deluxe have chamfered metal running around their edges, but where the Deluxe has a slightly curved, blasted aluminum back, the vanilla Zenfone 3 has 2.5D, which is to say, curved at the edges, Gorilla Glass on the front and back, which looks very pretty, especially if you happen to have no fingerprints, because those unfortunately do show up very easily. And it's slippery too, but hey, it... It looks cool to some people. The Deluxe, of course, also has Gorilla Glass on the front, just without the curved edges. Other than that one large difference, though, the external layouts of the phones are essentially identical. Power button and volume rocker on the right side, SIM and SD card tray on the left, USB-C, mic, and speaker on the bottom, this ridiculously old-fashioned dinosaur of a port called a headphone jack on the top. Psh, what is this, the 1950s? <laughs> On the back, there's the fingerprint reader and the camera flanked by the two-tone LED flash and autofocus sensors, although their positions are reversed from the Zenfone 3 to the deluxe version. Oh, and you'll also notice no antenna lines. They're actually built into the aluminum frame, so if you care about that, that's nice. Completely reading off the specs for both of these phones would take a while, so let's just go over the highlights instead. The Deluxe is suitably the higher end of the two, sporting Qualcomm Snapdragon flagship 821 chipset. It's actually the first major phone released with it, while the regular Zenfone 3 runs on the mid-range Snapdragon 625. Both have 1080p screens, but the Vanilla 3's is a 5.5-inch IPS+, Plus, while the Deluxe is a 5.7-inch Super AMOLED. For the rest of the specs as well, we can see that the Deluxe has a slight edge in just about every category other than their shared battery size of 3000 milliamp hours. Now aside from their new premium build, something that both of these phones are placing a big emphasis on is the camera. The 3 has Sony's IMX298 sensor on the back, which nets it 16 megapixels, while the Deluxe gets the IMX318 sensor with 23 megapixels. Other than that core difference in quality though, the two siblings' feature sets are pretty identical. Both feature an f2.0 aperture, optical and electronic image stabilization for photos and videos, and what ASUS calls Tri-Tech Autofocus, which combines infrared, laser, phase detection, and continuous autofocus into one. And that feature works pretty much as advertised. Focusing is super fast, but also taking photos happens very quickly. So while the quality of the Zenfone 3's photos might be slightly worse than the Deluxe, at least you know taking photos in active situations will get you a well-focused shot. Both of the phone's camera apps have a manual mode for fine tweaking, along with a plethora of other modes like HDR, the deplorable beauty face mode that I hate seeing on every phone I review, and super resolution, which takes multiple images and combines them into a giant 65 megapixel image. The camera has a low light mode, which really lowers the shutter speed in order to squeeze every last bit of light out of the photos. But thanks to the image stabilization, it can lead to some reasonably bright and blur-free photos, provided you can hold the camera 
camera somewhat steady. Video at 1080p, while excellently stabilized, suffers in quality a bit on the regular Zenfone 3, but you can squeeze out some more in the 4K mode, while the Deluxe has pretty great looking video at both 1080p and 4K. Now in terms of raw performance, both of these phones are the first devices out with their respective processors, the Snapdragon 625 and 821. The Deluxe, unsurprisingly, delivers performance at the top of its market range, and throughout my use of the device, it never disappointed me in terms of responsiveness. Navigating menus, switching between apps and playing games was a breeze. The vanilla Zenfone 3's Snapdragon 625, on the other hand, was noticeably slower, but not in any way that would severely degrade your experience. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the benchmarks from the Zenfone 3 because of the flashing problem I mentioned earlier. I it happened before I could grab the benchmarks off of it, but you'll have to take my word for it. Using it was smooth, and I most likely wouldn't even have noticed a difference in performance if not for the direct comparison to its uh, superior sibling, the Deluxe. Battery life was pretty great. I did notice the Zenfone 3 apparently lasting a little longer than the Deluxe, even though they have the same battery size, but that's no doubt because of its more powerful internals, using up the battery a little faster. They both support fast charging, so, that's fantastic. On to something less fantastic. While some manufacturers have been taking cues from users who complain about bloatware and unnecessary features added to Android phones, Asus apparently didn't get the memo. Okay, I shouldn't be so hard on them. The aesthetic they use in their Zen UI Android skin is pretty clean, icons have a pretty minimal flat design, and there are some very useful gesture features like double tap to wake, drawing different letters while a screen is off uh, to launch the camera or the phone or the clock, and even motion gestures like flipping the phone over to silence a call. And the fingerprint sensor is also extremely responsive. I never had it fail once to recognize my finger. But still, there's around 15 apps on these phones that I would consider bloatware, and that's too much. There was also an annoying gesture turned on by default that brings up Zen UI Quick Find, which is basically a Google Now substitute when you swipe down on the home screen. So I was constantly bringing that up by accident when I wanted to swipe down the notifications bar. And swiping up gets you the manage home interface that is basically another way to do things that you can already do with stock Android. It's not that Asus's custom changes are inherently bad. I got used to them while using these Zenfone 3s. They simply seem unnecessary and therefore are a bit irritating. I just wish manufacturers didn't feel the need to add and change things just for the sake of it. Just to have their own phones be a little different. I think the Android user base is large enough at this point that we like picking up an Android phone and not having to relearn how to use it because everything's in a different place for some reason. So there's some cons to it. What phone doesn't? On that note, where do these guys fit in to the Android market? Well, the Zenfone 3 is an excellent mid-range smartphone with a great camera, solid performance, and a nice premium build. It's certainly one of the best, if not the best, smartphone you can get for around 250 bucks US. Now the Deluxe isn't so cut and dry. It's got the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 processor, as we've said, with plenty of performance and bumped up specs. But at 500 bucks US, it's coming up against phones like the OnePlus 3 and ZTE Axon 7. It'll be up to you whether you think the still very reasonable price is worth the bump in performance and a crazy nimble camera. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Click here to watch more videos. Follow us on Twitter over here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, I have to go and send Asus back their phone that I bricked. And if you've ever had to send a phone that you bricked back to a company that lent it to you for a review, you know it's not that big a deal. Anyway, see ya.